Yo guys, what is up? Welcome to another video. So this is the progress on the rear control hoverboard car. And as you can see, it's still in the design stage at the moment. So problem is, most of the parts that we need are all 3D printed and 3D print is broken at the moment, so I can't print anything else. Um, this is one of the things that we need. So this is the wheel hub mount. So it's got these two parts here, which close together and they clamp around the hoverboard wheel shaft. And then those two pieces are attached to a motor bracket, which, which is a bit like this. So this is the same kind of motor that we're going to be using for the steering except it's currently used for a robot arm. So, as I said, because the 3D print is broken, we're gonna have to try and make a prototype using these parts, which shouldn't be too hard. I mean, I think the gear is the same, same gear ratio, and, well, actually, no. I know this one's bigger in this design, um, but it'll, it'll be good to see, like, um, if there's any other problems that we haven't figured out during the design stage, like um, Say for example the wheel is turning at full speed and it's right at the end Is it going to snap the teeth off or not when we try and turn? So we should be able to figure that out with this kind of prototype Okay, so what we need to do to make this we're gonna have to somehow make some kind of motor bracket out of these two pieces here and cut the gears and attach them to probably a, a block of wood and then we'll have the 16 mil hole inside and then once that's all built together we'll be able to clamp it to a surface and connect some controls connect the motor to it and fire it up to see what happens so this robot arm this was um, supposed to be for one of the original tank bots which never ended up happening I think the robot arm ended up bigger than the tank bot itself so that's probably what kind of led to the design of doing this hoverboard one. Okay. Right, there's probably not going to be much strength in these, so I've got to see if I can leave as much gear of the, there as I can. I might even have to support it with, I don't know, perhaps put some hot glue in there or something, just to give it a bit more rigidity for when it's cut. Because it, it was basically made for um, fast print mode, so we're using as little material as possible. Okay, this bit. Um, as well on the design, as you can see the motor bracket is on the outside of the gear, whereas on this one it's on the inside. So we're gonna have to probably, um, we're probably gonna have to uh, cut these gears down a little bit, as well as try and get them off, they're pretty st stuck on at the moment. Um, so yeah, we're gonna have to cut these down probably to the same thickness as this one. I'd say, I think it's about, I don't know, eight millimeters. It's not too bad. Um, so yeah, we'll cut them down and probably cut this corner off here. And what else, what else do I need to do? All right, so because these, they've got to stick to a block. We're probably gonna cut it. Like we'll have the triangle bit. Blue pen, great idea for blue plastic. Uh, that's a blue pen. Right, right. right. <coughs> okay, so I think these steering's they're like 67.5 degrees, something like that. So we're just gonna go with 70 and then about 70 again. Uh, if you think this is bad. Wait until you see how we start cutting this stuff. Okay. And there we go. Right. So, I mean, the obvious way, the, the easiest way I should have done this is obviously take a picture of that top view, print it out to scale, stick it to the plastic, and then cut around it, and then we'd have an exact shape. But. Yeah, we're just doing this the easy way. 
because it's only a prototype, doesn't really matter exactly. Um, considering it's going to be a piece of wood there anyway. So the wood, I think it's, we're going to use a piece of three by two. Uh, okay, about halfway, and then two, two, and one, one. Right. Okay, there we go. That's roughly our gear. So we're gonna to have to cut off all of this, and then we'll cut off that, and then we might, we'll probably leave that curved like that. And then this bit, we'll probably make some more holes. And then use that to fix it to our piece of wood. So this bit here you're looking at is one of these gray bits there, which is the same as that orange bit there. So we need to make two of them. Um, instead of having the piece of wood in two halves, with a half a slot going through, we're just gonna have one block of wood with a single 16 mil hole that the wheel will just slide into. Okay, that's it for this part, and now we'll start cutting everything up. Okay, so here we are with the prototype steering wheel mount. Um, I managed to get the motor in there with the gears touching this gear. On this side has a bit more space. Um, and instead of using the block of wood, I managed to use a couple of little pieces of 2020 profile with um, two 16 uh, millimeter shaft connectors. And they're holding the wheel on pretty tight. Now it's not 100% tight, but it's tight enough. Uh, the problem was it's a little bit wider than what it should be normally. It's only supposed to be about 40 millimeters, but it turns out on this it's about 60. Um, anyway, it's not an issue. We managed to get around that by using some motor spaces, which they work okay. So the gears, we cut down them as well to make sure that, that they'd fit and they're okay. I mean, you can't really see very well. Yeah, I'm trying to... So yeah, you can see this bit better on this side with the gears. You know, there's quite a good mesh on it. Um, can't really see through that, but yeah, it's good. I mean, I'm, I'm quite, quite surprised about how strong it is. You know, I'm really trying to push it and the teeth aren't breaking. So at least we know that the teeth are strong enough. Um, the bracket, obviously, once it's bolted down properly, you know, it's going to be a, a lot stronger then. We're not going to get any of this wobble. Um, what else? Yeah, so the motor, which is the one that I use for steering. I tested that out just before doing the video and it worked fine. Went to go and test it again with some longer wires and all of a sudden that stitch stopped working. But um, there's nothing to do with the wires. It's what well, it is, it's a 12 volt motor. I forgot, I connected it up to a 24 volt battery and I, I think I fried it. Okay, so it turns out that the motor wasn't broken and the battery I tested wasn't 24 volts. It was only 14.4 volts. So no problem there. Um, all I did, basically, I traced back to the wires, found there was a split in the wire, cut the wire, stripped it, and reconnected. So, we've done a few little more alterations since. So, as you can see, we've got a potentiometer here for measuring how much turning angle we've got. And we've got all the Arduino, and we've got a little speed controller. Uh, yep, speed controller. That one's not being used, but that's a speed controller. We're using one of these ones, cheap one off eBay. I think they're about three pounds, something like that. Right, so we got we got um, the main battery power for the drive for the wheel, and we're using a twelve volt battery for the steering motor. <coughs> okay, 
Right, let's place that there. So again, using the PlayStation 3 controller, I've mapped out the steering for the left analog stick. So turn left, let go, turn right. So it does go all the way and it's a bit slow. It does go faster, but this is just for the video so you can see it better. So you can see we've got a gear on a potentiometer that just runs along this main one here. And then inside you can see that little white gear just there. There's two of them, one either side of the motor, it's a dual output worm gear motor. Um, yeah, so we got the two gears, those ones, one potentiometer, and we got steering left and right, okay? So that's good, you can see like, you can see it works. I mean, it turns the wheel, which is exactly what it's supposed to do. Um, the only reason we haven't got much steering angle is because potentiometer, it only turns like, 180 degrees and when it's geared down that much you only get like that much travel but it still works like now this is pretty much um, converted in, into a giant powerful servo now this is doing the same what servo would do um, I did have it so it could follow the position of the analog stick but it was a little bit ah, there you go yeah it's, it's a little bit jumpy as you can see like it, it, it kind of works but I'm sure with a bit more like modification to the code and stuff. Um, we can get something smooth about that. Right, and now the bit you've all been waiting for. So we're going to go full speed and we're going to try and do some steering just to make sure it all holds up okay. Right, so we got normal speed, that's reverse, and forwards, okay, and high speed mode. Right, that's high speed maximum high speed so we're gonna try and steer it now okay I mean nothing nothing bad looks like it's happening you know if we try and do that no it's not I'm not getting any crazy explosions or things jumping out the desk so it's good All right yeah, the shaft's a little bit loose. I just gotta make sure it doesn't spin too much. Nice, this is cool. So we got steering and we got we got drive now. So all we need is like four more of these wheel hubs and then we should have a pretty decent car. Okay, well that's it for the video. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to like and if you want to see more, don't forget to subscribe. So obviously I'm gonna be making the rest of this and making it into a car. Um, it's probably going to take a little while, like maybe a couple of months, but there's going to be different videos like this, all staged out. Um, well, not staged out, I mean, like for all the different stages of the project. So, remember, subscribe, and, and, then, and then you can see them more. Okay, that's it, I'll see you on the next one.